Hello my dudes, dudettes, and everything in between, and welcome back to Clive Games. And today we are going to be continuing on with our let's play of Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, if you don't remember where we were, we came here to, where is it, uh, wine port, because the last thing, ingredient we need before the dude tells us where Titan is, is to find wine. And so this guy is supposed to help us find a uh, vintage wine. Because that's totally going to help us prepare to fight Titan. Shimani Lomani has another bright idea. There is a chance, however small, that another resident of Wineport could furnish us with a suitable wine. In fact, you had excuse me, come several years ago, I guarantee this would not be a problem. Alas, the quality of our product has declined significantly in recent years. The only breeds cultivated these days are common lowland vines which isn't to say that their grapes are of poor quality, only that we have known better. Long ago, the vin vinerons of Wineport crossbred several species and produced a grape-bearing vine of never-before-seen quality. Lucas grapes were once the pride of this town, as they were ever used to produce vintages which surpassed all others. This includes the most ar aromatic, the most complex, and the most flavorful of all wines. I, the legendary Bucus wine was born right here in Wineport. Now, part of my enthusiasm. You see, I once had the privilege to sample that particular wine. It was an otherworldly experience in that moment. I felt as though I had tasted the nectar of the gods themselves. I transcended my mortal flesh and was one with all creation. But, as is all too often said, the calamity changed that. Bucus vine vineyards were completely destroyed, along with much of the existing stock of Bucus wine. What little remains is closely guarded by its owners, for it can no longer be made. If we cannot convince Bygelart to part with his wines, our next best option, as ridiculous as it sounds, is to find someone who has a bottle of Bucus wine and offer to them every yield we can spare. I've heard rumors that one of the vineyards tending the vineyards might have once owned a bottle. Perhaps you could start by speaking with them. That sounds very, very expensive. I do not know if I want to go around and try and find some of the most expensive wine that there is. That sounds like it'll put a dent in my wallet. Not just a dent, it's gonna poke a hole straight through it. Durium Afarium. Mucus wine. Ah, don't remind me. Used to have a cellar filled with the stuff. Thought I would thought I could keep the wine safe from thieves and elements. Never counted on a bloody primal blowing up my goddamn house. Yeah, that can kind of put a damper on things, you know? Just, you know, prepare for something your whole life, and all of a sudden, boom, primal. I know how that feels. I'm pretty sure we all know how that feels. What, do I, I have Bucus wine? I wish. I never had the chance to try it myself. Sorry, friend, but you're a few years too late. Great, no one knows. Surprise, surprise. Look, hmm? Most regrettable, but we had to try. Ah, Babuka's wine would have been perfect for the occasion, though I must confess my certitude could be due to impart to my personal history with the beverage. It is, after all, the very reason I decided to become a venter. After Titan blinded me in our battle beneath Ogomora, I fell into a deep depression. It wasn't until I tasted Bukas wine for the first time that I realized there was still so much I could experience, even in my condition. It helped me to find a new direction in life. Oh, that's sweet. It breaks my heart to think that wondrous Ambrosia, which once filled me with hope, may be forever lost to us. Even thought. I must say, this talk of Bukas wine has made me rather nostalgic. Indeed, there is much I miss about my life with the company of heroes. After everything the captain has done for me, I could not bear to disappoint him. I have no fear. I swear that I shall find a suitable wine for the banquet, though I may need some time to think of a solution. 
In the meantime, there is a favor I would ask of you. Two years ago, in the deepest depths of my despair, I stumbled across Vilbrand as a vagabond drunk. I suspect I was looking for a place to die because I nearly found one not far from here. It was there a man named Des took me in and nursed me back to health, and it was he who gave me my first taste of Bucus wine, which helped me to find my new calling. Though I am still a novice in the arts of wine making, I would like him to know that I am pursuing my dream. This wine is my own original creation, and I would be most grateful if you delivered it to him in my stead. Dress sometimes works at the Raincatcher Gully Dogs, so perhaps Ritz Ritzkilt can tell you where to find him. Ugh, another delivery. Where, can't we just, like, buy some random bottle of wine, say it's something very pricey, and then just move on? Like, seriously. Half the snobs who buy wine don't even know what they're talking about. Heck, half of them buy expensive wine, never even drink it. They'll put it up somewhere. Rest. Oh, you mean that Herbert. Aye, I tossed him a few gill when he when we need an extra pair of hands. He doesn't talk about himself, and I sure as hell don't ask. When a man's got a face with scars like that, you best leave well enough alone, I say. If you've a mind to find him, though, then head southwest to Severed Stream. There we go. I can do that. So all the way down here. Going straight back here through Raincatcher Gully. Gone toad. Hello, you filthy, filthy man. What? What do you want? Oh, wine? I didn't ask for this. Who sent you? I, I, uh, dude, keep it in your pants. Dress is suffering from extreme duress. Can't, can't sleep. They won't let me sleep. The midges, the buzzing, it keeps me awake. I'm not, I, I never wanted to hurt anyone. I won't fight. I don't want to fight. Please, make the buzzing stop. Make the midges go away. Okay, okay, fine. I'll kill them. I don't want to. Five of them? Dear God, that's gonna take a while. That's a, um, botanist. You can tell by the hatchet on their back. Don't attack me, don't attack me, don't attack me. I love how like he says they keep them up at night, but they're all the way over here, like you can hear that far. Okay, let's see. 
let's hope he'll actually have a decent conversation this time, you know. Instead of complaining about bugs that are yards, meters, moms, whatever you want to call it, away. Not so loud anymore. Did did you do that? Thank you. You you helped me even after what my comrades did to your country. Hmm? We were on a reconnaissance mission when the maelstrom caught us by surprise. We tried to escape, but the others, no one else survived. I didn't ask for this. I'm not even Garlean. They conquered my lands. They just like they con tried to conquer yours. I don't want to die in some blasted jungle halfway around the world. I just I just want to go home. Dude, I can't help you there. I, I wish to thank Shamani for the wine, but that that is overly kind. Would you be willing to bear a gift back to him? Last night at Red Mantis Falls, I collected the set from nearby palm trees. It placed in coconut shells and stored a few bells at a time. It, it makes for fine wine, see? It should be ready by now. Let three shells out there. Please take them to Shamani for me. I'm, I'm glad she moved on with his... I'm glad he's moved on with his life. I hope one day to do the same. Ah, so he's an ex garlian Huh. Yep, in this part of the game, just as long as I remember it being. I'm surprised they didn't try to cut this out too, because this is a bunch of pointless crap. But that's kind of like ingenious of him to be able to make wine through by putting it in coconut shells. That's pretty resourceful. Of all things for you to make wine, I don't know why, but to each their own, I guess. But then again, I do remember back in school whenever we had like a question whenever uh, we learned about something in the English class about a deserted island, some kind of book, um, and we were asked um, what things we would um, bring. And surprisingly enough, uh, beer is supposedly better for you than some other drinks because uh, it's high in water or something like that? I don't understand it. It personally didn't make sense considering the fact that it actually dehydrates you from what I can tell. I might be wrong. I don't drink very often. If I do, I drink cocktails. That's what I drink. I like my fruity. It's been some time, Clive. It's been five minutes. What do you have news of dressed? Ah yes, I recall he did have some knowledge of winemaking, a simplistic but nevertheless effective method that utilizes the natural properties of palm sap. I shall have to enjoy this badge before it spoils. We are not so different, Dress and I, two men who have long struggled not to let our scars define us. I worry that he has been alone with his thoughts for far too long. Um, it is past time I pay him a visit. Thank you for looking after him, Clive. I did literally nothing. By the gods, Clive, listen, I know you're eager to wash your hands of this wine business. He has no idea. But I've just discovered something extraordinary about dressed palm wine. He sealed each coconut shell with a leaf, a leaf which has a very distinct shape and unusual odor. I thought I was just going mad at first, but now I'm certain. These are the leaves of a Buka's grapevine. Do you know what that means? Somewhere in Raincatcher Gully, the legendary vine still grows. If we could attain a cutting, we could revive the Bugus wine industry. We must know where Dress found these leaves. Here, take one of them back and see what he remembers. Okay. And now it's all the way back to the Mad Men. Because that's always fun, running back and forth and back and forth. Like, I feel like they would have just cut out the thing and been like, 
um, I don't know, go kill a gooboo or something. And oh my god, you managed to find the wine leaves. Oh, oh my god. Surprise, surprise. But nope. Still do the whole thing of, hey, haven't seen this guy in a while. And even though I know you're busy, like, trying to save the world from a godlike being, uh, I need you to go deliver this completely and useless item to a completely useless man. Just a small thing like that. Oh, hello again. What is it? It was just a leaf, isn't it? I only chose it because it was pretty. Didn't know it was rare. I found them near the juggernaut to the south, but I didn't see any grapevines. I saw fresh gooby tracks, though. Maybe, maybe the leaves came from the vines growing on the back of one such beast? If you go looking for it, please be careful. Some goobies are more territorial than others. You may need to defend yourself. Ah, got Fluffy and Efred. I think I'll be fine. Doki, here we are. Where? Oh, there you are. Yay, that was easy. But then again, we are also, and I am fast traveling all the way back up there. Dear God, going back and forth is a freaking annoying. What did Dress have to say, Clive? Tell me everything. He didn't say much, but I found this. Aha, I was right. This smell, this texture. I hold in my hands a Buka's grape vine cutting. Come now, come, enough of this nonsense. I've heard talk of your discovery, and I refuse to believe that a common adventurer and a novice venture could. Keep talking, bit dumbass. Keep talking. Twelve is my witness. It is a Buka's grapevine. Wherever did you find this fantastic specimen? Well, you would offer this to me? But why? There is none better pos position to reconst reconstruct the Buka's vineyards than you, Master Vegland. You have the resources, the knowledge, and the passion to do so. It would be selfish of me to keep this cutting. It would also be very profitable, you little potato. I never knew you cared so deeply about your craft. Thank you, good sir. I will not squander this gift. In just a few years' time, I swear that every tavern across Eorzea will once again be clamoring for a cask of wine for its legendary Bucus wine. Sir, you need it. Wait, the shape of this bottle, the scent, this label. He's blind. How could he see? He, okay. This couldn't possibly be a 1457 Bucus? But that's impossible. This vintage has not been seen since years before the calamity. It was a crown jewel of my personal collection. For years, I debated opening it, wondering if today or tomorrow would be the ideal time. But now I realize that it was never meant for me. It should be savored by the saviors of Wineport, I say. He has made us an offer we cannot refuse. Master Gatoru will find no finer wine. You have forever changed Wineport, Clive. Thank you for your kindness and your generosity. Ah, but do not permit me to delay you any longer. Pray deliver the wine to Captain Wisecott. Well, yes, I would very much like to drink it. But I'm a patient man. I have faith that one day I will have another opportunity to taste perfection.
Whatever. Your choice. That took a lot longer than I would have liked. Oh well, it is the price of replaying a game. And your soul is still just here, just like waiting, like, where the fuck is he? Your prolonged absence was beginning to concern me. So, what of the one I asked you to bring? Is that seven hells of 1547 Bucus? Bacus? Even I know how rare that is. I have to admit, I didn't think you had it in you. But congratulations, Clive. Thanks to you, this will be the most luxurious, luxurious feast Costaville Soul has seen in years. Considering the links you went to, I hope our guests appreciate it. Speaking of which, your associate arrived a short while ago. She appears to be growing somewhat impatient. Perhaps you could tell her that the banquet is about to begin? I don't think she's going to be happy about us staying for a banquet. And in all honesty, I'm in the like mind as her. We need to get going. But we got a new minion! Oh my god. God, he looks like a well, pretty much like another potato. <gasps> oh my God, he's so cute when he runs. Gestola is concerned for your well-being. You have the look of a man who has been to the seventh hell and back. That a guest should be expected to supply the victuals for a banquet held in his own honor, and this while the shadow of Titan looms over us all. It beggars belief. Only I can only applaud your stoicism. Had I been asked to endure such ignominy, I fear I would have accept should, should have accepted my lot with less grace. Yeah, well, I didn't exactly have a choice of whether or not how I responded. Yeah, Lady Yastola, Sir Jet. <laughs> okay. A thousand pardons for this extreme discourtesy. I was wholly unaware of the, your true identity, sir. Had I known, I would never have permitted my man to subject you to such unspeakable ordeals. Hardly unspeakable, more like annoying. Come now, he must have sensed something was amiss. You didn't seriously think I would send you running the let the breath of Eorzea for a banquet, did you? Spare him your mockery, Captain. Your intent was unclear to me until this moment, and unlike me, Clive has no knowledge of your traditions. Mayhap you would be so good as to enlighten him? Aye aye, fair's fair. There's no sense hiding it any longer. We five were chosen by our brothers and sisters. And before the company of heroes disbanded, we each swore a solemn oath that any who would follow in our footsteps must be weighed and measured, not by their reputation, but by their deeds. Each man would judge these would-be godslayers by his own criteria. If even one found him wanting, he would be rejected without a second thought. But if he proved himself worthy, we swore that we would do our utmost to support his cause. The world has ever been full of brave souls, eager to give their lives for a righteous cause, but all too few capable of making a difference with their sacrifice. To send wave after wave of hapless adventures into the jaws of a foe against whom they have no hope of victory is worse than futile. Titan is not one to be challenged lightly, and we will not be complicit in the deaths of the unworthy. Which is why the five of you designed to test Clive with such commendable thoroughness. Time well spent, I am sure, but tell us, Captain, what is the assessment of you and your fellows? He's a brave one, not much is certain. He will he willingly walked into the midst of danger, despite being repeated warnings, my repeated warnings, that it would cost him his life. His skill is undeniable. He stalked his prey as relentlessly as any child of the sand, and struck with precision 
when an opportunity presented itself. Too many adventurers these days care only for fortune and glory. Well, look at me. Clive, however, is a kind and generous soul. I am certain he has no shortage of loyal allies who will gladly fight alongside him, his, along his side. The Shock. Wily Uplander is talentful plans maker, Trixie foe for mighty rockman. I can only concur with my colleagues assessments. We five of the company of grand heroes hereby excuse me, judge you a worthy challenger. Cast down the Lord of Crags, Clive Jet, and write a new chapter in the history of Eorzea. Fine, enough pawns and ceremony please. With the formalities out of the way, let the festivities begin. Summon the dancers, pour the wine, eat, drink, and be merry, my friends. For today, we celebrate the birth of a new legend, Clive Jet, Titan's Bane. Clive Jet, Titan's Bane. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Well... As long as your stole is okay with it, I'm sure we can have a minute to, you know, <laughs> eat, drink, and be merry. And of course, they want us to talk to the girls first. Ugh, where are the men? Congratulations, sweetling. Now relax and enjoy the show. It's only just begun. Is it over yet? Please say yes. Now we get to the good stuff. I've seen more appetizing. Tasting the exotic feast triggers a divine revelation, and that brief transcendent moment, you glimpse the true form of reality comprehend its fleeting nature and cry out to the heavens in celebration it was dinner what the fuck was that when you face the lord of crags think not of limsa lumensa eorzea or anything beyond his chamber think only of the men and women by your side fight for them and they will fight for you remember that no great victory was ever achieved alone yeah that's what it means to be a healer i let them do all the fighting and i do all the healing Shot. Goodly Uplander must be facing mighty rockmen with clever fighting thing. Gobby Plot cannot be coming to rescue this time. Yeah, because he totally rescued us. <laughs> yeah. He almost did with that kind of thing. Ah, Clive, you brave fool. Promise me that when you meet Titan, you'll look him in the eye and tell him Landonel sends his regards. I don't think he's going to remember you in all honesty. You are a veteran of countless battles, Clive. This is but one more. True. Trust is your experience, and you will prevail. You are blessed with a fortune to rival the Earth itself. Titan will struggle to break you, I think. I hope so. He didn't when I first played this game. You are too kind to indulge them, Clive. This banquet is as much for the company as it is for you, whatever they may claim. I do not deny that they mean well, but now is scarcely the time for celebration. Though they have all but pronounced you the victor, the battle with Titan has yet to begin. The hour has come for the good captain to make good on his promise. We must speak with him again. Yeah, by the time we actually get to Titan, it's taking forever. Alright dude, cough it up. Why get truly intends to tell you how you may face Titan this time. You must be eager to face Titan. Eager is not the word. As promised, we will show you the way. Excuse me. Travel to Bronze Lake in Upper Lenosca. There you will meet with Riol, another man who once served with the company. To ensure that this knowledge does not fall into the wrong hands, he will remain in hiding until you have given the correct signal. 
Give me your map. You must whistle loudly at these three locations I mark. Only then will he appear to meet you at this fourth location. I realize this may seem excessive now, but you will see that it is more than reasonable once you comprehend the risk inherent in our method. Well, in all honesty, if people want to go and face Titan and die, let them. Let them. It is called... Uh, ooh, fast travel there. It's called natural selection at its finest. I mean, Titan is pretty much just like Corona. People don't want to wear their mask out in public. Well, if they die, that's on them. They want to blame someone else? Nope, you're an idiot who just couldn't wear a mask because I can't breathe in it. Oh, 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 the poor thing. I don't care. And it's funny you think I care about you. And we've been up here before, uh, but on the other side of this lake, this was where the, um, I think it was Tataroon is the Corkin's name, uh, where we had to go find Tataroon to ret uh, return his earring for Baskaron, and it's also where we found the Arcanus Guildmaster. So this is the other side of the lake. So here. Alright, before I continue on, I'm going to attune to this ether, right? such a big deal because uh, you'll see why in a minute like even if they tell us it still poses a problem greetings mate might you be the one the captain said would come calling aye I thought so now pay attention now cause I ain't explaining myself twice Alright, the Lord of Crags. Years ago, when we was weighing up how to get to Titan, one of our scouts stumbled across the Beastman Aetherite, see? Eh, what's that look for? Not familiar with them? He speaks of an unamplified etherite, which has been claimed by a beast tribe. Lest you wonder, there is no fundamental difference between such etherites and those which you have used on countless occasions, Clive. Ah, well, if it ain't the Charlayan last, not bad. Forgive me for interrupting. I had planned to await your report, but I succumbed to curiosity. The tunnels beneath Ogamora form a bewildering labyrinth that no outsider has ever fully explored. How the company of heroes managed to navigate it is a mystery I have long pondered. Ah, give us a bit of credit, love. We weren't daft enough to go try going in the front. The kobolds are always digging new tunnels and filling the old ones with traps. One wrong step, and the next thing you know, you got a hundred tons of rock on your noggin. Suicide to even try, see? Funny thing is, the kobolds didn't seem to have trouble finding their way around, and it was that has got us thinking. I mean, Ungamora mines are like a bleeding city, ain't they? 
and getting around in a city that big would be a right pain in the ass if you didn't have an aetherite, wouldn't it? So, it stood to reason that the kobolds must have one, didn't I? Didn't it? Hmm. Even if there were aetherite shards in the depths of Wilgamora, you wouldn't have needed to attune yourself to them before you could identify their signatures within the life stream. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, though. We had this Charleum bloke to help us, see? Delivered us right into Titan's bedchamber, he did. I don't really know how he did it, but I do remember him saying it weren't nothing any Charleian scholar worthy of her salt couldn't manage. <laughs> did he, now? Locating the beacon in the absence of a known signature might be possible if the etherite in question happened to be... Ah, yes. But in order to guide a traveler to set bacon safely, a second party would require to... Hmm. It is possible, in theory at least, yet I cannot be certain until I try. Plainly, all will depend upon whether or not I am worthy of my salt. Or worth my salt. Oh, you are, lass. Don't you worry about that. Have a bit of faith in yourself. Why don't we all go to Zelma's run and take a closer look at the Aetherite? It ain't far, though there's sure to be a few kobolds blocking the way. Not you can't handle mine. Alrighty. And see what I mean? Like, even if they told someone how to get there, Pretty much no one would have been able to actually get into Ungomora Mines in one piece. Whether they use the Aetherite because they don't know how to use it and they would end up somewhere completely wrong, or B, they try to go in through the labyrinth and get lost for eternity. Either way, they wouldn't really get in, and that's kind of like I said, that's on them. Their own stupidity. Alright. Going to a two, and thankfully I'm over leveled, so none of these guys are going to give me any grief. So, this is the Aetherite the Company of Heroes used to gain access to Titan Sanctuary. Hmm, is it Pablimo? So speculated. In its present state, this Aetherite signals will not be strong enough for our purposes. I may, however, be able to use my own energies to amplify it. Alas, the task will monopolize my attention for the duration. It seems you'll proceed without me, Clive. I must needs remain here and supplement the beacon's power, lest you be denied your only path of escape. Fear not, I will summon the Maelstrom forces stationed nearby to protect us. With effort, it, will, it is possible that I may be able to stabilize the Aetherite signal, and thereby join you. Albeit, belatedly. Until such a time as I do, you will be on your own. Seems fine with me. Now, let us see if I am worth my salt. Oh, you stole a baby. You are. You are more than worth your salt. I have located another beacon, far below the mountain. I can only speculate as to what you'll find there. So stint not in your preparation. But, alright. And so we're going to fight Titan in the next episode. Sorry guys, I ran out of time. I tried to fit it in, but I couldn't quite. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Hope to see y'all next time.